On either side the river lie long fields of barley and of rye that clothe the wold and meet the sky. And through the field the road runs by to many towered Camelot. And up and down the people go, gazing where the lilies blow, round an island there below, the island of Shalott. Willows whiten, aspens quiver, little breezes dusk and shiver through the wave that runs forever by the island in the river flowing down to Camelot. Four grey walls and four grey towers overlook a space of flowers and the silent isle embowers the lady of Shalott. By the margin, willow vale, slide the heavy barges, trailed by slow horses, and unhail the shallop flitteth silken sails, skimming down to Camelot. But who hath seen her wave her hand, or at the casement seen her stand, or is she known in all the land, the Lady of Shalott? Only reapers, reaping early in among the bearded barley, Hear a song that echoes cheerly from the river winding clearly down to towered Camelot. And by the moon, the reaper weary, piling sheaves in uplands airy, listening, whispers, "'Tis the fairy lady of Shalott." There she weaves by night and day a magic web with colours gay. She has heard a whisper say, "'A curse is on her,' If she stay to look down on Camelot, she knows not what the curse may be, and so she weave it steadily, and little other care hath she, the Lady of Shalott. And moving through a mirror clear that hangs before her all the year, shadows of the world appear. There she sees the highway near, winding down to Camelot. There the river eddy whirls, There the surly village churls and the red cloaks of market girls pass onward from Shalott. Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, an abbot on an ambling pad. Sometimes a curly shepherd lad or long-haired page in crimson clad goes by to towered Camelot. And sometimes through the mirror blue the knights come riding two and two She hath no loyal knight and true, the lady of Shalott. But in her web she still delights to weave the mirror's magic sights, for often through the silent nights a funeral, with plumes and lights and music, went to Camelot. Or when the moon was overhead, came two young lovers lately wed, I am half sick of shadows, said the lady of Shalott. A bow shot from her bower eaves. He rode between the barley sheaves. The sun came dazzling through the leaves and flamed upon the brazen greaves of bold Sir Lancelot. A red cross knight forever kneeled to a lady in his shield that sparkled on the yellow field beside remote Shalott. The gemmy bridle glittered free, like to some branch of stars we see hung in the golden galaxy. The bridle bells rang merrily as he rode down to Camelot, and from his blazoned baldric slung a mighty silver bugle hung, and as he rode his armour rung beside remote Shalott. All in the blue, unclouded weather, thick jewels shone the saddle leather. The helmet and the helmet feather burned like one burning flame together as he rode down to Camelot. As often through the purple night below the starry clusters bright, some bearded meteor trailing light moves over still Shalott. His broad, clear brow in sunlight glowed. On burnished hoofs his war horse trod. From underneath his helmet flowed his coal-black curls. 
As on he rode, as he rode down to Camelot. From the bank and from the river, he flashed into the crystal mirror. Tirra lirra by the river, sang Sir Lancelot. She left the web, she left the loom. She made three paces through the room. She saw the water lily bloom. She saw the helmet and the plume. She looked down to Camelot. Out flew the web and floated wide. The mirror cracked from side to side. The curse is come upon me, cried the Lady of Shalott. In the stormy east wind straining, the pale yellow woods were waning, the broad stream in his banks complaining, heavily the low sky raining over towered Camelot. Down she came and found a boat beneath a willow left afloat, and round about the prow she wrote, The Lady of Shalott. And down the river's dim expanse, like some bold seer in a trance, seeing all his own mischance, with a glassy countenance did she look to Camelot. And at the closing of the day, she loosed the chain, and down she lay. The broad stream bore her far away, the Lady of Shalott. Lying, robed in snowy white that loosely flew to left and right, the leaves upon her falling light, through the noises of the night, she floated down to Camelot. And as the boat head wound along the willowy hills and fields among, they heard her singing her last song, the Lady of Shalott. Heard a carol, mournful, holy, chanted loudly, chanted lowly, till her blood was frozen slowly and her eyes were dark and holy, turned to towered Camelot. For ere she reached upon the tide, the first house by the waterside, singing in her song she died, the Lady of Shalott. On the tower and balcony, by garden wall and gallery, a gleaming shape she floated by, dead pale between the houses high, silent into Camelot. Out upon the wharfs they came, knight and burgher, lord and dame, and round the prow they read her name, the Lady of Shalott. Who is this, and what is here? And in the lighted palace near died the sound of royal cheer, and they crossed themselves for fear all the knights at Camelot. But Lancelot mused a little space. He said, she has a lovely face. God in his mercy lend her grace, the Lady of Shalott.